the blacksmith was busy with his work for a while. Van Dye the van looked up after pouring two or three times. Who, father, you? What do you want to do? Do you want a sword or a sword? Swords and swords are no longer needed these days. Where are you going to get a sword? Said the blacksmith. What do you say, sir? Do you need a sword while working with it in your hand? Van Dye the van said. This is a rare job, old swords were brought in for blacksmithing. A few years ago, when the Pandya War and the Northern Women's War were going on, there would have been mountains of swords and swords piled up in this workshop. Even at the beginning of the Sri Lankan War, weapons were in demand. Now swords and swords are not asked for. Old swords and swords, they come to me to sell. Did you come for that too? No, no. I need the sword for some time yet. If I finish the agreed work, then I will take the tala in my hand and sing the Devaram and set out on the pilgrimage to Shiva. Then I will bring my weapons to you if you want. Then why did you come looking for me now? I've left more than my horse. There's still a long way to go. Just iron the horse's hoofs. Can you do that? Yes, that is the custom in the land of Arabia. Here too some people have now begun to hammer iron ladles into horses' hoofs. I am also a little accustomed to that work. Would you give me a bridle for my horse? It takes a lot of time. You can only take your job after finishing the work at hand. Vandiyadeva thought, he too was tired. The horse was suffering too. After waiting for a while, he decided to continue shielding its hooves. I'll wait until the handiwork is done, then at least you'll do it right away, won't you? Why, so be it. Vandiyathevan was looking at the sword forged by the blacksmith for a while. This sword has an unusual design? Isn't it like a royal sword? Whose sword is this? He said. Father. A river called Arakandra River flows a short distance from here. I heard that too. So what? I used to go to the Arakandra River and often drown myself. Very good work. Blessings to the destination. So I try to tell the truth and never lie as much as possible. What's the objection? Who told you to lie? I didn't tell you. If you didn't ask me any questions about this sword, I might as well not lie. Whoa! So polite! Vandiyadeva thought in his mind. I ask no questions. You must not fast. Just finish the handiwork quickly and take my work and do it. The blacksmith silently concentrated on his work. Vandiyathevan stared at the sword for a while. He was amazed to see the image of a fish engraved on its bottom, on the side of the handle. What is the fish figure for? Does it have any meaning? Just for decoration? The blacksmith exposed the place of the fish to the fire again and hit it with a hammer, which seemed to be his intention to hide the fish from being seen. Valaverian thought why this? While thinking, his eyes began to roll. Nathredavi, who had been chased away by him for many days, now began to forcefully cast her spell of love on him. Vandiyathevan could not escape from it. He fell while sitting for a while. Then the blacksmith lay down beside the furnace and fell asleep. In his sleep Valaverian had many terrible dreams. A dream about a knife. A man came and asked the blacksmith to return the knife. Colin gave. What wages do you want? He asked. I don't want any wages. Let it be my gift to Ilayarani of Pavur, said the blacksmith. Be careful. This matter must not be known to anyone. Most importantly, do not mention the name of the young queen of Palavu. Do you know what we will do if we do? Why am I going to say the name of the queen of Pavur, sir? I won't tell anyone. There's a boy lying here. Are you making noises? He is fast asleep. He cannot hear the thunder. If he even seems to know, throw him into the fire of this furnace and finish the job. At the end of this conversation, Vandiyadeva dreamed that the blacksmith and the knife wielder were going to drag Vandiyadeva and throw him in the furnace. Then the dream changed. 
Vandiyadeva was taken to hell by the messengers of Yama. Yama Dharmaraja inquired about Vandiyadeva's activities on earth. He is an expert in telling lies. There is no limit to how many lies he has told, said Chitragupta after looking at the leaf in his hand. No, no. I said it all in the service of the emperor's family. I told a few lies to get the job done. A lie is a lie no matter what. Throw him into the great fiery pit of hell. Yaman said. Immediately, a hundred thousand voices screamed from within the hell. Yama's messengers took him away. They prepared to throw him into a great fire that burned terribly. Looking at both of those messengers of Yama, the faces resembled those of the Pula Vetareus. Kundavadavi came there while he was wondering about it. He lied only to do my bidding. So put me in the fire instead of him. She said. At this time Nandini Devi also reached there somehow. Put them both together in the fire. Said the saint. The messengers of Yama caught both of them and threw them into the fire. Oh no, Vandiyathevan screamed and roared, he woke up and sat up. The thought that it was a dream was comforting. But his body was still shaking as it all seemed so real. Chedge. He decided not to lie for any reason from now on. I've been asleep for too long. He asked looking at the blacksmith. It has not been long, two sureties. Father. You are from the Kumbakarna dynasty? Do you sleep like this during the day? How come you don't sleep at night? Said the blacksmith. My God. I've been asleep for two hours. Has the horse's hooves been covered? It must be done now. But what's the use of that to a sleepy lunatic like you? You'll lose the horse. And you'll lose yourself too. Vandiyathevan threw it away. A doubt arose in his mind. He got up and ran to the door. Let's meet the horse where he left it. Oh. Where's the horse? He put his hand on the handle of the sword while making a noise. Don't be afraid. Your horse is safe. Go look in the backyard. Vandiyathevan went to the backyard and looked. There his horse was standing in a three-sided barn. The blacksmith's furnace paid the little boy feeding grass into its mouth. Seeing Vandiyathevan, the horse shivered. Sir! Come here and take care of your horse. We need to measure its hooves. Said the boy. Vandiyathevan went near the horse and stroked it. The boy measured the horse's hoof. Who brought this here and built it? Vandiyathevan asked. I built it. What for? Dad told me to build it. What's that for? The great reaper and his retinue passed through this town a little before. If they had seen the horse at the gate, they must have taken it. An old memory came to Vandiyathevan, the memory of Thirunarayanapurathu. He was ashamed of his mistake. He was grateful to the blacksmith and his son. After taking the measure of the horse's hoof, both of them came into the furnace field. The blacksmith took a piece of iron and bent it like a hoof and started working. You saved my horse? Thank you for that, said Valavarayan. Should I not save the possessions of those who seek me? That is my duty. How long will it be before the royal entourage goes this way? More than two o'clock. It amazes me that you were asleep for all that demonstration. I just fell asleep. Have you wasted all this time? Could you have started work immediately after they left? How to begin? After hearing the news they have brought, who will have the heart to work? I am doing this with a firm heart for you. Where do you come from, father? Vandiyathevan said, I am coming from Sri Lanka, wondering what the message they had brought would be. The blacksmith looked his face up and down. Then lowering his voice, Did you see Prince Aromas Hivarmar when you were in Sri Lanka? He said. Vandiyathevan, who had been thinking that he was telling the truth, said, I saw. When was the last time you saw him? I saw it this morning. The blacksmith looked at Vandiyadeva angrily. Are you playing bro? No sir. I told the truth. You seem to even tell me where the prince is now. Oh. 
I'll tell you if you ask. Tell me where the prince is. Nagipatanam, Sudamani is in Viharam. Father, I have seen many liars. I have never seen someone who can tell a myth like you. Vandiyadeva smiled inwardly. Everyone is ready to believe a lie that is fabricated. They refuse to believe the truth. It seems like our horoscope is special. Brother. When did you leave Sri Lanka? Four days ago. That's why you don't know the news. What news sir? It's news that Bonnie's treasure has been swept away by the sea. Vandiyadeva pretended to be startled with difficulty. Oh, really? Who said that? Since yesterday, there was talk like that all over here. Today, when Palyavatare went this way, the villagers heard him. Palyavatare said that the news was true. The thunder did not fall on the head of that sandalwood sinner. Why are you keeping that old man? It is because of him that this has happened. The villagers say that he has done some trick and drowned the prince himself in the sea. So they stopped the hospitality that had been arranged for him. Is this village so fond of the prince? Do you want to ask? The people of the village are so many and now they are covered in tears. What about these villagers? The whole Chola country is going to cry and cry. It is going to curse the farmers. Already, the emperor is sick. I don't know what he will sing after hearing this news. What other tragedies will happen? Domakata will be in the sky for a few days. Is it appearing? Something has to happen to it. Vandiyadeva thought about the possible mishaps that could happen. It was good that this blacksmith did not believe what he said. Even if she didn't lie anymore, she didn't need to tell the truth about the prince. Ilyaprati has asked him to stay in Sudamani Viharam for some important reason. After seeing the princess and talking to her, she should act according to her ideas. Brother. What are you thinking? Said the blacksmith. I was also caught in a whirlwind in the middle of the sea. I thank God that I survived by God's grace. Is there such a thing as God's grace, or what? Big man. What do you mean by that? If there was such a thing as God's grace, would the wickedness of the reapers still be going on? Would Pawnee's lover have drowned in the sea? Senior. Those who are in power of the slanderers. Shall we speak of them in such a way? If anyone falls within earshot? Be a little careful. You should be more careful than I. I'm talking while I'm awake. You're sleepy. Hey? What did I say? You called the Palyavatarayas as messengers of Yama. You called the young queen of Palvur a female ghost. What you said is true. But what will happen to you if anyone but me falls into earshot? Just as you were raving like that, the entourage of the Palyavatarayas passed through that road. I was terrified. What did you do? I stood at the door and reached the door of this furnace. Before that, I led your horse to the backyard and tied it. Did I remember anything else in my sleep? Nothing short of a thrill. Ouch! What did I say? You forced the prince to come to Old Town. He said he would be imprisoned by the order of the reaper. And what else have you said? Brother. You even said something about the youngest brat in Old Town. Beware, father. Beware. Vandiyathevan bowed his head in shame. He panicked that Emo had said something inappropriate about Ilya Prati. If you want to sleep from now on, you should sleep in a separate room with the door closed. Or sleep in an uninhabited forest, desert, or mountain cave. Brother. How did you get caught in the whirlwind? How did you survive? The ship I was on was struck by a thunderbolt and sunk into the sea. I floated for a long time holding on to the broken sail. Then with the help of a runaway girl I escaped to the shore. Couldn't the prince have survived the same? If God willed, he might have survived. Where did you stay last night? It was at Kotakare that the Palyavatarayars were gathered together on the beach. So I lay down and slept for a while in the Kulagar temple. I left before dawn. That's why you don't seem to know the news about the prince. Vandanam for letting me know, 
sir. I must go as soon as possible to Padayare to avoid being entangled with the retinue of Palyavatarayar. Which way is best? Palyavatarayar is going to Tanjavur Rajapat. If you go along Malayaratong Bank, you can reach Palyare. You'd better slap the horse's hooves a little sooner. Here. Said the blacksmith. He started hitting the bent iron with a hammer. This is for the big gardener. This is for the little gardener. This foot is for the gardener. This is for the gardener. He beat while saying that. From this, Vandiyathevan got to know how angry the people of the country were against those petty kings. Latham ended up hitting the horse's hoof. Vandiyathevan came to pay the blacksmith for the work he had done. The blacksmith refused to accept it. I did it because you are a good boy. I didn't do it for money, he said. Vandiyathevan again thanked the blacksmith and took leave and left. At the time of departure, the blacksmith said, Brother. Why are you going to the old house? He asked. Sir. If you ask me nothing about it, there will be no need for me to lie, said Valaveria. The blacksmith laughed and said, Father. You are fast becoming a villain. Be so careful even while sleeping. Saying that, he sent the answer. When Vandiyathevan started his journey again, it was time for the sun to set. After a while, dusk fell and darkness enveloped us. By this time, Valavarayan had captured Moliere Tongarai. Above that, you have to go along the river bank. There is no need to inquire about the route. It's appetizer time. But thousands of stars in the sky were shining lights. There are not many trees on the banks of the Molai River. There were only small bushes. So the stars provided the light needed to find the way. Thousands of fireflies were circling and playing around the river banks as if competing with the bright stars in the sky. Vandiyadeva's heart swelled with excitement. There were many reasons for that. While the whole country was worried about the prince, only he knew the news that he was safe. It was possible to know to some extent how much the Chola people loved the prince. It was heartening to think that he had managed to fool the magician Ravidasan again. To top it all off, the thought that he was soon going to see Kundave Devi excited him to no end. Is he just going to see? Young Brady is going to do what he's told and leave. He was proud to think of all the obstacles to the cause and to think that he had overcome them all. No doubt we will meet Ilay Abradi by this time tomorrow evening. Aha! Just thinking about that meeting made him think. The sky lit up with starry flames, the earth where lightning flew, the Malayatu flood that flowed with a roaring sound, and the cold park that came slowly made Vandiyadeva ecstatic. Heaven and earth appeared to him as one blissful bliss. He remembered an old love song. This is the perfect place to sing your heart out. There is no human traffic in the surroundings. Why even the birds have gone to the nests? What is stopping him from singing? Here is the song he sang. Don't you need to say who he was singing with in mind? Whether Vandiyathevan finished singing like this or not, the foxes started howling in the distance as if competing with him. At the same time, a human voice was heard laughing. Vandiyathevan was a little scared and looked around. His hand went to the door. A figure emerged from the dark shadow of an elm. Brother, your song is wonderful. The interview of foxes is even more wonderful. After saying that, Devarala smiled again.